I'm going to talk to you today about statistical process control and just run through some, some brief slides. So here's the purpose of statistical process control, or SPC as it's commonly known. So what you're trying to do is distinguish between random variation and this special cause or assignable variation. So random variation is kind of the natural variation in the process. So it's always going to occur. It's really hard to reduce this type of variation. Whereas you take the special cause variation, it's not random. You can assign some specific cause to it and then ultimately eliminate it. So you, again, you know why it's occurring or maybe you don't on the surface, but you, you, you can investigate that and you can quickly find out why, why that occurred. So maybe you have Monday through Friday and on this, one, on this Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, there was... A delivery that took a hundred minutes and the average was maybe 10 and all the deliveries ranged from about two minutes to, to 20 or 30. Well if you have this one way out there that says a hundred you're gonna want to investigate that and find out why that was the case and so again we'll talk more about about identifying those that are outside of the control limits. SPC is the voice of the process not the voice of the customer. So the customer gives specifications, but the SPC is really telling how, how much variability is there in your process. Okay, so what do, what do control charts tell us? They show us the mean and how it changes over time. Again, you, if you had Monday through Friday, you could look at the mean on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and see how that changed over time. You can also see the, the variability in the process over time. When special causes are present, again, that's what I talked about earlier, you can see those dots that are way outside of the control limits. And so you need to, to learn more about why those dots are occurring. And then it tells the story of when, but not the why. So if I have Monday through Friday again, you can see the, the mean on Monday. It doesn't tell you why the, the mean was what it was on Monday. Just, it just shows you when. Okay, so here's some, some possible causes of out-of-control processes. I'm not going to read all of these to you, but you can see how if there is something specific, like a sudden jump in values, what the, the possible cause may be. And the, the same thing here. Okay, so now looking specifically at the control chart, and what, are, what would cause it to be out of control? Okay, so here, let's take this process. We have the mean, which is this X bar, and it's this dotted line going across. And then we have the upper control limit, which is three standard deviations from the mean, and it's this solid bar. And then we go all the way down here to the lower control limit, which is this solid line, three standard deviations below the mean. Okay, so here in A, you can see this is an example where it's out of control because this one point is outside of this control limit. So you take the control limits, go all the way from this solid line all the way to this solid line. And if there's any point outside of that, all it takes is one, then the process is out of control. Uh, B is another example here of a process out of control and it's two out of three successive points or at least two standard deviations from a mean. Okay, so the most common one you'll probably see is A, but then there's these others uh, that are also uh, dictate that a process is out of control. So here's another example in D where you have a run of six or more successive points. And again, there's, there's others. You can see F is, is a pattern, up, down, up, down. That would indicate that it's out of control, um, a consistent pattern over a period of time. And so there's others again, but the, the most common are the ones that I covered. So how would you create a statistical process control chart? Well, you can use Minitab or Excel. Minitab is really easy to use. Uh, you can use the, the help assistant in Minitab, and it'll tell you which control chart to use. Again, very, very simple. Um, tell you which control chart based on what data you have. You can also use Excel. So here's a Minitab output. In this top 
this top chart is the the mean and this is really the one you'd want to to focus on primarily uh, and so you have this mean by by samples so here's sample one sample four seven ten and so on and so that ultimately gives you this mean here 47.7 which is this green line that runs across and so then you have the values for each of these samples which are the dots the upper control limit is this red, and the lower control limit is this red down here. Okay, so if you're looking at this process, you can see that it, it, it looks like it's in control. There's no point that's outside of the, the control limit, which is where you'd first want to look. And all of them kind of go in this uh, hovering pattern right around the mean. There's no, I guess there's no, there's no pattern to it, to their uh, movement around the mean. Uh, but the, the points tend to stay around the mean. So again, that, you'd say that process is in control. So calculating the, the control limits, the lower control limits and upper control limits, here's the calculation. So you have this mean, and then you subtract three times the square root of the mean times one minus the mean, and then you can see in how you'd calculate that out. Again, not something you typically want to do when you have software, but again, that's that's how how the formula works. So here's an here's another example of one, and you have this p bar, which is again the mean, and just another way of saying the mean. And then you have the upper control limit here and the lower control limit here. So if I'm looking at this again, the first thing I want to look at is is there a point outside of the control limits? That's that's the most common reason a process is out of control. And so I do, I see that here, point 0.1, I also see that with point 0.24, again, and point 0.3. So you have point 0.1, point 0.3, point 0.4, and point 0.24. So this process is really out of control. All it takes is one, but here you have four different points that are outside of the control limits. So what do you do if the process is out of control? We well, try to identify and assign a special cause to that to that uh, this dot here. So you, here, if I had month three, I'd want to identify. Well, why was three so high for medication errors? What what was unusual about that third month? And so that's what you're trying to do. Next, you establish again the reason. Confirm that the cause is abnormal. So maybe I had. Uh, a new new physician that I, we had just hired, and so maybe maybe they started in March, in month three, and so that that was the reason why we had to get him trained up. Then what you would want to do is you'd want to delete that special cause data. So I would go and I'd, I'd identify what caused this that was unusual. Again, it has to be unusual, otherwise it's not necessarily a special cause. So what caused that? And then remove that data when you're calculating the control limits. And then you'd recalculate. Okay, so you first would, would have set it up this way, then you'd pull that data point out, point three, the one that was furthest from the control limits, and then you'd recalculate and you'd see whether the remaining points, are they in the, still in the control limits? If they're not, then you'd want to go and identify um, the cause of, let's say here, 0.4, this, this number right here. Okay, and that's all, and, and some of the slides came from this healthcare operations management by the Health Administration Press.